Hey everybody and welcome back. Right, well from my hands and knees you can see I have been busy but it's just tidying and cleaning which I didn't think you wanted to see and as I got everything tidied and cleared, cleaned the, uh, the stable was all put together. So seven bikes, all mine except that one which is Jensen's which I think I'm going to be riding this year because the other four bikes are all now spoken for. We had our little non-banquet banquet which was a lot of fun particularly the last part where my friend Chris Arnold who rode the Triumph and if you've been watching all the way through you'll have met him before he, he gave a little lesson for us that I filmed. He like me uh, likes his single malt whiskies so there's a bike show at the Curtis a sort of aviation museum and uh, they do that each year so we always have our banquet on the Saturday night that that's on over the weekend so that way we can go and uh, see the bike show there's a hotel right across the road and right next to that is a sort of uh, what do you call them a microbrewery thing so we can stay at the hotel so we don't have to uh, drive home which for me is about hour and three quarters so we had a really good time and we had a drawing I had five people who wanted to ride a bike this year and of course only four bikes so we had like a double drawing and drew the four names out and then as I drew each name out well I didn't draw them actually we found a charming lady to do it she drew a bike out of a hat so not only did the five people not know who was going to get a bike but they didn't even know which bike they were going to get so I'm hoping it all works out to the well and uh, that's why I'll probably be riding the Beezer so anyway that's done and out of the way this thing is finally done and out of the way um, well you saw that in the last video I think it came out well I wish I'd got that hose just an inch longer but I've had it lifted up so the forks are fully extended and there's still some play in the, the thing, the hose. So anyway, so that one is for sale this summer, which leaves me with these five bikes, including the yellow one. So why are waffling on like this? Well, I've been keeping you in suspense about some possible acquisitions. I'm wondering now whether I told you that I'd finalize the deal but anyway I'm still keeping you in suspense because I think you're going to be rather taken with this uh, I'll tell you the full story when they arrive but there are two bikes coming and there will be two projects two very different projects really which I think I'm looking forward to doing and of course it'll fill the garage up but they are not arriving until March the 17th now this video oh i maybe should have told you this right at the beginning but there's going to be a lot of talking there's going to be some work but there's going to be a lot of thinking and planning and stuff like that so if you don't like talky videos uh you can you know go do something else something more interesting so anyway those bikes are coming middle of march which when you see this will be what the 24th 5th of February so it'll be almost three weeks and I don't have anything to do I obviously don't want to start a project when those two things are coming so as I say I'm going to take at least a couple of weeks off unless something interesting happens and I'll film it but what we're going to do this week as I say is we're going to do some mods on my frame jig because the project I did have in mind was going to require a frame to be built and I did find a couple of shortcomings in it but we'll go into that in more detail later on so busy on the road today what else have I got? it's bloody cold it was 7 degrees Fahrenheit last night what's that? that's 25 degrees below freezing it's almost 3 nines, 3 fifteens so it's about minus 13 C when we got up this morning. 
Uh, of course, now I've completely lost my train of thought. So anyway, that's what we're going to be doing this week. And, uh, oh, the one other thing. I had, I'm sure I mentioned this, I'm almost certain I put a little video out about it, but I had another comment asking about the Henderson. Well, for those of you who did follow, you remember that there was an awful lot of specialist work to be done on the Henderson engine. And we found that there was actually sort of the US. There it was. The US Henderson specialist was only a couple of hours away in New York State. So we went up to see him, we took everything, and Jim decided to leave back the engine with him, which, as it turns out, was a very good idea. Uh, because at the moment the only thing that's being done is the crankcases have been repaired and apparently they have to cut the bottom out and make a new piece up which they CNC they've done anyway when I found out about it Jim just told me there was a hundred hours of alloy welding involved and I thought oh well, since then I've learned that the parts, including the CNC and everything, were $4,000 and there was $10,000 of welding. So that's $14,000 and to be honest, you know, when you start putting parts into it and getting it built up. So anyway, that's the situation with the Henderson. It's still there. It's been there with him for a year, over a year. The car is all finished. And um, so anyway, that's the situation with the Henderson. And as I said, I think if you go back and look, the very last Henderson video is a short video of me showing you around that fella's workshop. Right, so um, I've worn myself out doing all this sweeping and tidying and stuff. So I think I'll go and have lunch. And then when we come back, I'll start to tell you what we're going to do and we'll actually start doing some work. All right? Right then, so here it is. Now some of you might have seen me actually build this and know the ideas behind the design. But it was a while ago. Uh, what did I build this for? Did I build this for the Otter? I guess so. So it's a while ago that I did it. Right. Why did I build it like this? Well, think about three reasons. One is that any jig has got to be pretty robust. And the way I wanted this to be, I knew it was going to be big. And, you know, I'm a little old man. If I'd have built this in one piece, I'd never been able to pick it up. So that was the first thing. The second thing was, I don't just build a bobber every project or a chopper or even a child's bike every project with the same frame so it had to be pretty open for different design layouts so I, I wanted it to be as flexible as possible that was the word I was looking for flexible and the sort of third reason I built it like this and it's why it's so long yeah, I built it to fit onto this lift table. But I was thinking that I would be tending to build the frames around the wheels. So, in essence, I built an extremely long vise. So that I could put the wheels in, set them where I wanted, put this other piece on. And that wants to be the other way around. And then with through bolts, you see, I could literally clamp up on the wheels. So I made some pieces to go in the front here as well to take into account the fact that a rear rim is going to be uh, wider than a front rim. Okay, so then onto this, I thought, okay, I keep need, meaning to needing to move things. So I designed these. Now they can go on, you see, move wherever I want, clamp them up tight. Another lorry. Then, these, as you can see, move. 
and I can put different lengths of these in. So these were for all sorts of things. They were the, that was the plan anyway. There were some different ones. Can't even remember what all of them were for. So I've been thinking about this. Actually, just while, as I was walking up from lunch, I was thinking, do I really need it to be this long? Because one problem it has is, as was pointed out to me in a comment, I was being a bit optimistic to think I could buy lengths of even pretty thick walls, because this is eighth inch thick, I think, box section, and for like a seven foot length to be perfectly straight and everything, and it's not so in each end I have adjustable, I put, first thing was I put adjustable feet in. But then I found even though I could move the ends it was still slightly twisted. So I did actually, this is not now in the same place as that one is. I cut the, rid, the fixed one off. I got it all clamped down so it was exactly straight and then I welded it back on. So that more or less cured that. So let me show you the ends, because that's the first thing I'm thinking of. So here's the cross pieces at the end. And what I've got here is, I've got captive nuts sort of bolted on. Then these are adjustable for height. So the first thing I think they're doing is, I'm going to drill this a uh, half inch, put a half inch sleeve in it. Don't really need it, but just to keep it snug. A half inch sleeve with 16th inch walls will give me a 3 inch, 3 eighth of an inch hole. Then I'm going to do it at both ends and I'm going to drill through the table because the table's got all sorts of stiffness in it. And that way I can set these and then bolt it down tight both ends and hopefully keep it straight. So that's one thing I want to do. Now the next thing I got thinking, you know, I'm not going to build lots of bikes. I mean, I only do two a year and they bought, I've only made what, two frames and a couple of, uh, well the BSAs I have the other jig for. So I thought I could make this a little less flexible and possibly a little more rigid. So let me show you that. So you notice it's got holes. It's got ones further down as well. And what I have is some pieces made up that go in there all made up at the same box section so they're all I couldn't even miscut them that's why I didn't do it that way so they go in there with half inch bolts as I say I was planning to make this as sturdy as possible so Okay, that goes there. Then when they're all in, it's tightened up, that has these two parallels. So let me put them in. Right, it's that long ago since I used this, I've forgotten myself. Okay, so the three spacing pieces go in here. And they don't go vertically, they go horizontally to sort of spread the uh, thing so they get there. Now, as I say, normally what I was doing, what I had done was I'd put a wheel in, front and back, and then we didn't put these blocks in, we just clamped it up. But this is the... Uh, so it was made to be flexible. The other way you could use this was the way you see with a normal frame jig where there's a post here that you put the headstock on and it's adjustable. That is this. All right. So that goes in there like thusly. You see this, I just moved you. Hang on, let me move you slightly more. I'll bring you in to show you this more now. Okay.
Right, so when this is all clamped up, we should find that everything is nicely in line. They're all half inch bolts to make them. Now, generally on these you see them where there's two great big plates that clamp onto this. I didn't want to do it that way, so what I did was I got a box section which slides on this and has two adjusters. So that can go where I want it, get tightened up, and here is to mount the headstock on. Now I've done it with half inch, but I bought some three quarter because I thought it might be better with three quarter. So I might redo this just to make that, although it's when it's all fastened down and you see there, that's why I want to fasten the, uh, the thing to the bench to make it stiffer. So the headstock goes on there and then we build the other things. Now the original one, when I have a wheel in, this would go on. get bolted on and then this cross tube I actually used to have the forks leaning oh, I bet you have taken you out of shot haven't I oh no you can still see it this wouldn't be in and then the forks the, the wheel would be here and I'd lean the forks against these and then it could go up and down to get the forks at the angle I wanted so we're not going to do that Because basically all of the only frames I'm going to be building are the trials frames and I want the forks and them to be 24 degrees as you know. Right so we're going to set this up now this has I noticed this had the slightest bit of giving it as well so what I'm probably going to do is drill and tap this so that I can fasten it down absolutely solid we're going to check all these out. Now we come to if you like a side project hold on right so one of the things obviously was well my thinking was if everything was dead right and the wheels were in <clears throat> not only could I put them the right distance apart and everything but they would be held exactly in line so as I say I have metal pieces actually which slide in here so that the center line of the narrower front rim is exactly the same as the center line back there but checking wheel line you know you normally do it with your long bit of wood finding a long bit of wood or even a long piece of tube I generally do it with a 4140 tube because I get there in six foot lengths even that isn't perfectly straight and over six foot you could be out a fair bit now Somebody's going to say, use a piece of string. I do not like using string because string, <laughs> for want of a better word, string bends. So you fasten the string at the far end, see your back wheel's down there. You get it touching one side, the back part of the back wheel. You get it touching the front part of the back wheel. But then as I say, it'll bend. The least little bit and suddenly, you know, and over six feet, as I say it's a lot so the idea is you're sort of supposed to start over here where it's touching the back end of the back tire and you move it until it's just touching the front side of the back tire and then you check your front wheel but it's not easy so I thought Michael it's the 21st flipping century so I bought a laser level I actually used this to check the BSA this does a vertical laser and a horizontal laser. So what I did for the wheel line was I set it and then I adjusted this until it was I had it, the vertical line shining down outside the tire. And then I was able to put a ruler up against the tire and of course the, the laser shone onto the thing. I got front and back of the rear tire exactly right and then I could come and measure the front and also it's got a horizontal line so we have a slight, slight side project 
it comes with this thing to fasten it onto various things. It also comes with a thread in the bottom, quarter inch 20 course, because that's a standard photographic thread for tripods and stuff. So I could mount it to my tripod, but then I wouldn't have anywhere to mount the camera. So let me show you another side project. I have a couple of halogen spotlights which come with these fold up tripods and you slacken that and that comes out tighten it up so that has got a hole in this end with a little locking mechanism so what we're going to do is we're going to make a thingy an adapter to go in there which is going to be threaded quarter 20 and then we can just fasten that onto that Right, and then I can move this around, raise and lower it, and get whatever lines I want. Okay, so that's something else we're going to be doing. Another little thing we have to do, because I never used this setup, was we've got to make two cones. So that we can hold the headstock. So we'll make, we'll make the headstock, put its bearings in, and then we can put it on here, on a cone. We use the cones so it's... We can do like with a wheel balancing thing uh, stand so that it'll accommodate different size bearings and then we can set that to whatever angle we need it now what I'd like to do this actually isn't long enough is I'd like to actually put the yoke on All right because that way I can put the forks in lorry And I can make sure the forks are at the angle I want as opposed to the headstock. We've discussed this before. But also I can set this up this post so that the end of the forks are 13 inches off the bench. And that means the forks, because the, the a wheel spin with a 21 inch front wheel with a trials tire on and an 18 with a Trials tire on four inch back tire they're both basically 13 inches to the wheel spindle so I know where the forks are going to be for when I'm deciding on the uh, ground clearance and so on so I might put a lot longer piece onto there I think I made it thread into this spindle there's a couple of little bits of bronze but I can get that out so there's, there are several little side projects to do. So the first thing we're going to do is uh, get these holes drilled so we can bolt this thing down and make sure it's absolutely level. All right, as I mentioned, there's going to be a lot of uh, thinking, so I'm talking and stuff. I was just looking at this and this is incredibly long. And if I am going to so stop doing it needing to put the wheels in and make it as rigid as possible I just measured all the trial spikes from headstock which is actually out of picture on this to rear suspension mount because if you think I need to have the headstock in here I need to have some fixtures where the swinging arm pivot is going to be and really the only other fixture I need is where the top of the rear suspension unit is going to go. I can build the whole frame from those three points. Headstock, swinging arm mount, um, top of the rear suspension units. On the couple of BSAs which are just modified frames, it's about 36 inches. On the New Enfield and the Otter and actually on the BSA that I just did it's only about 33 34 okay so if we say we're gonna fit one of these something like that to go up to the to hold the actual rear suspension mount in place while it's being bronzed in we need to come let's say at the most 36 inches
that's there. Uh huh. So I could shorten this certainly to there. I could check which is the straightest end because if there's a little, there's only one of these things got the slightest little twist in it. If I can find out where I can get exactly, you know, where I can get the 36 inches or so, make it say 40 inches, dead straight, there's another lorry coming up. Um, then I could cut it there and put my cross piece with its adjustable feet in. And actually, if, if I had the cross piece here with the adjustable feet in, see the table has got um, a panel that comes out for the back to drop the back wheel out. I'd be on this particularly rigid piece because this is made up of one solid piece from here to there and then a couple of pieces rather than having a big piece that they cut a hole out of. Right, let me do some more measurings and markings and I think we're going to be doing that. Right, so lengthwise these are showing with my little doodad absolutely horizontal. Crosswise that end all the way up to about here are showing level and then here is 0.15 of a degree slightly high. So if there is a bit of a twist it's in this, it's about in this piece. Right? So if I cut that off there See that's still 48 to the headstock. So I could actually, let me check here. 36 inches to the headstock is actually here. I'm only thinking about cutting it there because I've already got holes drilled there see so I'm just trying to reduce the amount of work we have to do because obviously these holes have got to be exactly lined up and I did this I think I did it in the mill I had them clamped together and supported at the ends and I drilled right through these in the mill to make sure they were in the right place so I think I'd happily make it that 50 inches long that's still cutting, it's 75, that's cutting over two feet off it. Yeah. Because actually that gives me enough room to put a fixture on this end to hold where the rear mud guard, where the, the hoop would go and the rear mud guard uh, ears would be however we put the rear mud guard on all right so let's do that first of all we'll cut this off just there or mark it up and then we'll put that cross piece on just here all right let me do that so i've cut that to length now i've just put the spacer in here instead of the post Cut the cross piece off, the bit I cut off. So now I'll get this all nice and level and then we'll weld this on just on one side so again it's it'll still come apart. Uh, well actually that's not that heavy. But it's still easier to stash away if it's uh, if it's not all in one piece. All right, so getting the little red thing on the battery. 
and I'm going to go out for my exercise walk around the around the loop and the sections because it's actually warmed up to 45 Fahrenheit which is what? That's 13 degrees above freezing about 7 plus 7 centigrade so tomorrow morning we'll come out and we'll get this done so that this is all nice and level then we'll drill that centre hole there and through the table on there so that we can just fasten it down and we'll start doing some more stuff so until tomorrow good morning everybody well this could end up being like the B50 because you know it's another five minute job I'm finding now you notice I've taken the spaces out this is higher than that now it isn't welded at all on this end and I flattened that in it must be the way it's welded on it's about a sixteenth of an inch actually there that's about right that's about right it's higher there from there down to there it's higher how was that so I think what I'm going to have to do is um, hang on take this weld out of here sand all that flat and then bolt these up I've got some half inch threaded rods so I can bolt them absolutely up to each other make sure they're dead level then weld that side on although you see if I do that if I haven't clapped together and try and weld that side it's going to pull it like that I mean I can just spot it at the ends rather than sort of on the side ok let me look at it a bit more so it would appear that when I made this I made a bit of a pig's ear out of it because I've taken off the other cross piece that was welded on I've got it sat on some uh, blocks some machine blocks and with those two bolts in I don't even know how to put this together that one doesn't line up so it's not a case of modifying this it's a case of remaking it hi 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 Well, I might I think what I'm going to have to do seeing as I've got it unmade is clamp these two together make sure they're all absolutely square completely clamped right put them in the mill and re-drill these holes it would have been better as well if the holes had been sleeved because you know, they go in and be much better if I could just... Ah! Oh well! Said I had nothing to do for three weeks, it looks as if I have. But, of course, I don't want to keep showing you ten minutes of this, ten minutes of that. So, I think what I'm going to do is we'll just uh, video me getting this right so again you can learn from my mistakes and then we'll put a video out about it all right so let me do some thinking and some more measuring and stuff right i've got both ends clamped in between horizontal plates which has got me
square, 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 or I should say level really. Now I've got that clamping them together. That one goes in there. Won't go in there. Won't go through there. Well, you'll know it's even in here. Let's say I should have sleeved these. It's loose. So basically, there's enough slop in all the holes that it will go together. But because there's slop in the holes, these two can be moved out. The only way I can see getting around this is at least this piece I'm going to have to weld up. And when I weld it, I'm going to have to have it really tightly clamped like this. Lots of clamps. So, I think what I will do is we will oh, forget that hole we'll get one of the end holes lined up so that I can put that pillar in because I want to definitely want to be able to take that out otherwise this thing is going to be just unmanageable for me I lashed out and bought myself one of those hydraulic lift tables to move engines and things around so I can always, when I need to use this, lift it onto that and then slide it onto that table there. So, as I say, this isn't, it's not too heavy. Of course, whether I'll be saying that in another year or so, I don't know. So, that's the plan. I'm going to fit the pillar in there so that I know it's in bolt it up then take the uh, things like these we will weld a couple of those into there actually they go in that way so fit that in Put them, them in, clamp everything so everything is square and right. And then, actually, I bought George bought or oh, well, he got himself a new, newer, better MIG welder. So I bought his old one, which is nothing special, but for jobs like this, it'll be great, much better than the TIG welder because I can just bop, bop, bop and put lots of uh, tack welds on to hold everything and then we'll do stitch welding and all that clever sort of stuff. So let me, I told you there was going to be a lot of talking didn't I? So let me put the pillar in, put these in and clamp it all up and make sure everything is square. Alright, I got it clamped down. So both of these are level lengthwise. Both of them are level crosswise. That is vertical, but that's only clamped in, but that's good on those. I've got a piece in here up against that. I've got a piece here and I've got a piece here. So we're going to get all of these tacked in at the top, at the corners, just to hold it together. Then I'll take that piece out, turn it over, I'll clamp it down again and then I'll tack the bottoms and then when that's done we'll weld these in. Alright, so let me get my little cheapy MIG welder out and uh, start doing that. Which may not be pretty because I haven't had much practice with the MIG welder. So, there are three pieces welded in. Right, it's flat, it's level. Now then, you know I get a lot of comments saying that people enjoy the videos because I leave all the problems in, or my mistakes, 
and other people like the videos because of the problem solving. So this is a real bum a bundle video for you isn't it because I've made all sorts of problems <laughs> and uh, that's caused me to have to do a lot of problem solving. So okay this is down flat. Now then you may notice that this is diamond plate which for those of you who don't know what diamond plate is I don't suppose they are instead of being flat it's got all these little raised sort of fish shaped things so that means when you're measuring from this at a couple of places you've got to make sure that you're either on one of the little bobbles or on the flat now for these feet I was thinking about this last night I thought oh I'm going to make up some little plates with like a cup on I'm not going to weld them on but the feet can stand in them to spread it out so it's level well that's half the problem with this isn't it I've overcomplicated it so that is laid perfectly level everything's nice hunky dory and it just so happens down at this end where there's a little thing that bolts on there's a couple of holes so what I am going to do, right, is I'm going to weld a little plate on the top of there and on the top of there with a hole in it. And we're just going to run a bolt down through there, I'll have to drill that there, through there, bolt this down so that it doesn't, I mean I don't think it's going to wobble, but so it doesn't wobble. Right. Ah, uh, okay. So, I have to sand like mad, even though this spacing piece is exactly the same as this. It was uh, a pain. Look. Now then, what I did when I put this piece in, I had this bolted in. I pushed it up against it. Of course it won't work now, will it? Do 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 do. It's nice and sunny again and it's 50 degrees, so it's 10 to 4, 4 o'clock I'm gonna go out and walk around. So now when that's up against that and oh look how I've left all the bolts over the other side. Yes, I have. Hold on. All right, so I think you can see there. Zero, zero, zero. Zero, zero, zero. Zero, zero, zero. Okay. So that's that good. And there we are. The post goes in. quite honest that doesn't have to read vertical because the important thing is the headstock angle that's reading point four why is it reading point four Five. Yeah, it's going to go that way. This is unbelievable, isn't it? I hate welding. I really don't know how people fabricate things that they come out straight. Anyway, as I say, it's not a great problem because we're not building anything that requires that to be perpendicular at right angles with this. Now then, oh, it's gone four o'clock. I believe these things will, will go on if that's fastened to the floor. Yes, they will. So,
we can cut a couple of little bits of plate with a hole in the center drill a hole through there then we can bolt that down just so it doesn't move around Oops, switch that off why did I make it like this in the first place and I've been carrying this around so if I don't have cross pieces on actually the table has adjusters so even if it wasn't quite right I could adjust the table but it seems to be about perfect okay so as I say plate on there plate on there or should we just put a bolt in in the center no because then it could, I could bump it and it could go like that couldn't it no we'll do it and I've already got one hole so I'll put a hole at that end we can bolt that down we've got that in then we'll just have another little look at this thing all right that's it for today I'm going to go and have a tramp around in the snow and uh, today's Wednesday I will see you on Thursday morning all right Thursday morning hear the noise it's raining a bit all right I've cut two plates and drilled them and what I've also done I'm not going to bother putting plates on the bottom because I'd have to make sure it's all completely flat here we go lorry yet again but because I'm putting the bolt in here and I want it to go through a hole three inches down I put a little sleeve in so actually we've got the drill run through it but so it won't wobble it will go straight down the hole so let me weld these on one at each end and then we'll go back and do the next bit so they're welded on oh before I forget the white flashes I was getting when I was welding I tell you I'm really getting old I'd noticed in as I was looking through the screen I kept seeing a little red light and I thought oh that means the thing's working but when I looked at it the little red light meant that the battery was flat so put a new battery in and uh, everything's fine so as I say I put those things in look so it wouldn't wobble so now it'll go down through the hole oh let's do the job properly and put a, a washer on now also, the secondary thing, that will act as a guide for the drill when I drill the other end. So, why don't that screw on there? Yeah, 3, 8, 5. Not. Are they eight millimeter? Doesn't matter if they are. Hold on. Ten millimeter. I should have said not eight millimeter because they're three eighth bolts. But anyway, it's just the thickness of the zinc coating on them. I tried them with a ten millimeter. I tried them with a coarse, but just a little more effort. On. all right so that's going to go there so let me drill a hole at the other end right so that's got a bolt in it both ends so that can't move that's just to make it have even more mass shall we say now we've got it uh, having all the weight of the table with it but it never ceases to amaze me that welding I did there look this piece won't go in now eh? so we'll have to do some more sanding and filing and getting that to fit in there but we're not going to worry about that now because 
It's been enough rubbish already. All right, so and just in case you're thinking it's it's not the rubber things. All right, let's make up a couple of cones for holding the headstock in. Right, well, I'm getting peckish, so I thought rather than start something, I'd just have a look at this. So here's the. Uh, the idea, the front end is just as you've seen on every other frame jig. You know, this sets up at whatever angle you need that to be. But what I like about the way I find, finished up with the design was these things, which will clamp on there and you can use different length tubes. So you see they're ready there. I could have the swinging arm pivot plates bolted to these and they'd be held in place while I put the tubes in and similarly for the um, the top suspension mounts all that, I don't know what size that is, inch and a quarter or whatever you just need to, uh, to have some tubes of different lengths now this is, see these pieces are welded onto the top because this was the one with the cross piece for holding the forks in but as you can see with these, these are just bolted on, these are the same as these. So I can make these things any length I want and slide the things up and down. And, as I mentioned, now we've got enough length to put something at the back as well for that. So that's all coming along pretty well. I wish I'd made it like this in the first place, but I had this fixation about doing it with the wheels and that's why it ended up so long and everything. Anyway, nearly done. So after lunch, we'll finish off. All right. Change of plan, would you believe? So I got thinking about this. First of all, I am going to change that to be three quarters to make it more rigid. And. Uh, I thought you're overcomplicating it again, Michael. Why are you making cones? Are you going to make dozens of frames, lots of different frames? I thought no. You know, I'm probably only ever going to make another couple of three frames, if that. They're all going to be trials frames. I might as well use the BSA bearings, and if that's the case, when I make the headstock, it's all going to be the same size tubing. So instead of spending ages making cones, why don't I just make up a couple of thingies that go in like that? One there or one for the bottom right and then it'll hold it that's all they needed so that's them done two of them all right let's see about making this thing for the laser all right so there's our little doodad this is for that locking pin so that screws into there, as I say it's a standard photographic thread, quarter course. In nice and tight, and that goes in there. And that can't come out. How's that? And then, uh, let me just switch this thing on. Off, on. Now, apparently, it's self leveling. Hold your seats. Right, there you can see the horizontal marks. And there's the vertical one. So I can set. Can you see that? Really hold on to your seat. Hang on.
How's that? Let me move you around. Hold, hold on, hold tight. There you go. Now you can see horizontal and vertical, so I can set everything up now. As I say, welcome to the 21st century. All right, well, I hope this video hasn't uh, bored you too much. Other than that, as I say, the next couple of weeks, I'm probably going to change the oil in the lathe and the mill and stuff like that. So I'm not going to show you that. You'll get a little break from me. And uh, when I come back, which as I say, well, the bikes don't arrive till the 17th. It'll be whatever it is after that. What date is the 17th going to be? Can I work that out? Saturday was the 17th. So next Saturday be the 24th. Saturday after that will be the 3rd. The 10th. It'll actually be a Saturday. Oh, that'll be it. That will be why because he's coming at the weekend. So it might even be the week after that, or if he brings them on the Saturday, I might just do a reveal and show you what they are. Anyway, till then, you all stay safe and enjoy yourselves.